back, fellow Sandbarians. I am not wearing the same shirt that was in my last video. This is another day, another shirt. You don't remember what shirt I was wearing. I'm just kidding, I just made that O2 sensor video and that didn't take very long, so I figured I'd make this video and upload it a different day. So what we'll be doing uh, today is fuel filter. So this uh, is a Sambar Diaz, a KV4, um, but whether it's a KV or a KS, as long as it is fuel injected, uh, it is going to require a fuel filter that looks like this beautiful shiny Chingus here. Um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. This being a fuel injected sandbar, uh, it requires this, this big guy right here. Um, it's under a lot more pressure uh, than your carbureted uh, sandbar, so you will uh, see that the filters are different. Uh, this is a uh, aftermarket alternative to Searbrew's fill filter, which uh, I don't know if they still currently make uh, the fuel filters for the older generation sandbars, but I know they are on the newer generation sandbars. And judging from pictures, they look exactly the same. So I don't know if they changed some kind of fuel uh, rate in these suckers or what, but this is a four, RS-508 and the later generation is a 4RS-509 and they look exactly the same. So I don't know, a little tidbit of information that you probably don't even care about. But yeah, so we're gonna be changing this fuel filter on my Diaz. Um, it is located in the same exact spot as uh, the truck. Um, just right to the uh, right of the uh, passenger tire. I'm drawing blanks on directions right now for some reason. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do today. Change that fuel filter. Uh, it's, it was freshly imported. I don't know, it looks pretty nasty. So I'm guessing it's probably the original fuel filter. Uh, so it's just good to preventative maintenance um, so we're just gonna replacing it it has been acting a little bit weird on startups so I'm hoping that will clear out that little hesitation it has um, if that's not it then I am going to start looking into other parts so let's get going okay so what you're gonna need is a couple uh, fuel fuel clamps fuel line clamps these guys right here hopefully you can see that because uh, we are going to need to uh, clamp down on those hose lines so we don't get a whole lot of spillage when I take this off you're going to need a pair of pliers to fall on your head. <sighs> well, that's a bad spot. That's a bad spot to have that one. Whoa, mother. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's just put it up here, maybe. And these, uh, these clamps, hose clamps, are designed for airlines and fuel lines. Uh, you can probably find those on uh, Amazon or something. Those are, those are Matco brand, though. Okay, 
so it is a little bit dirty. I'm gonna wipe it up a little bit. It's probably gonna be pretty rusty as well. So uh, that might be fun trying to get the, uh, the bolts off. Cause this fuel filter is uh, bolted to the frame unlike the carbureted version that's clipped in. You're gonna need an extension on the upper guy. Probably wouldn't hurt to have some kind of face shield on. If you got your face shield left over from good old the vid, then you can put it to actual good use. Also, I do have it, uh, I do have it jacked up, so that makes it a lot easier to get underneath. And if you ever need to do your fuel pump, it's located right above. Right above your fuel filter. Alright, so let's get this. So I'm gonna break it loose by dripping it. The hose on the inlet and outlet. Kind of give it a little love twist. It's probably uh, really corroded on there. <sighs> okay, so after some finagling, and I just put my hair in it, uh, you can pull this line off uh, very carefully. You actually don't need to uh, stop it because that's obviously coming from the fuel pump. So, I mean, go into the fuel pump so nothing's gonna come out of it. Set that guy aside. Now, the other side, which seems to be a lot more fun, we can actually take advantage of it. Being disconnected on the one side Just watch out for falling fuel unless you want to taste taste it. So let's get that side off now. Celine. Let's put the other one back on. So it goes on the same way. Uh, I'm gonna need that clamp first. Gonna need that whole clamp first. Oh man. Gasoline. I did put a little bit of a uh, assembly lube, like the white grease on the nipples so it will slide in a little bit easier it's okay it, it's uh made for new engines so it'll just dissolve in the gasoline use it for injectors and that kind of good stuff okay so that slid up in there. And since it is a new filter, it is going to need to be primed. Slide this guy on. Clamp back on. Just uh, be prepared for fuel falling in 
on or around you. But hey, what's the point of working on a car if you're not getting dirty? All right, I'll get this slotted in. Come on, there we go. Butt it up against, okay? We can take the clamp off. Put this clamp back, back on over said nipple. Okay, that's good. Make sure there's not a. Make sure these hoses aren't bound up or anything. And now we can put our old hardware back on. So I actually just got off the phone or texting my buddy. Uh, we're gonna have a ton of uh, ton of videos coming up soon. Uh, doors, California mirrors. If you're not aware of what California mirrors are uh, and how to install them, where did that god dang flipping flapping? Not go. Oh man, there it is. California mirrors. Uh, we're gonna do lift kit. Uh, like I said, a clutch. Um, all kinds of stuff. So hopefully we'll be adding some more, some more uh, how tos for y'all soon. And. Uh, yeah, some more stuff. So if you're not subscribed and you're watching, uh, go ahead and do that maybe if you'd like to uh, get notified when we uh, do stuff. Um, I really do appreciate it. Okay, so fuel filter installed. Give her a little wipe down so she looks clean again. And now let's prime her and fire her up. So since it is a new uh, fuel filter, we're gonna have air, but we can just cycle it a few times and she should uh, be good to go. Let's give it a try.